In this video, I'm going to go through a few examples of how to use PDCAD in Tealy Scale Mode. So I've set it to Tealy Scale Mode in my settings. Then in my PVCAD window, I'm just going to go to the first tab. This doesn't change very much. These are just fields that auto-populate in the title block. They don't really affect the design of the drawing too much, uh, with the exception of fields related to wind speed and snow load, which if you're using Next Tracker specifically, it will actually calculate the tracker uh, based on the wind speed and snow load that you put into this box. The next thing I'm going to do now is uh, set the location. It will give you the option of using a map or a, or a file, in this case a KML or KMZ file. So I'm going to pick the Google Earth KML file that I have on a machine that has the area where I want to do my design. You'll see that it loads both the satellite imagery as well as any line work that's been drawn inside of Google. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tab over to my Site Layout tab, and I'm going to select the line work from Google and define that as a ground mount line with a setback of 20 meters. In addition to any line work that comes in from Google, I'm free to use native AutoCAD drawing tools to draw a polyline to demark any like obstructions like wetlands, roads, buildings, any areas where you, you can't be installing solar, you can just draw them as a polyline and then again go to my site layout tab and define it as an obstruction with a setback. If an obstruction has a height associated with it, it'll cast shade just like regular PDCAD would do. Um, so here when I define it, I'll give a give this building a height of 30 meters and it'll, it'll show the shade as well as a setback on the drawing. I'll now page over to the PDCAD mechanical layout tab, which has been completely redesigned for PDCAD utility scale. We have two new racking partners in the manufacturer dropdown, Next Tracker and Array Technologies, both single axis trackers. You also have the option of user-defined single axis trackers and fixed tilt racking in utility scale mode. We'll do this first example using Next Tracker because all the tracker geometry is pre-programmed. It lets me get started very quickly. After picking the manufacturer, the next thing I'm going to do is select the number of modules per string in that particular tracker and the module from my module database. And then using that and the wind speed snow load that I entered in my first tab, it'll actually look up the specific next tracker tracker to use on this, on this layout. Next thing I'm gonna enter either the ground coverage ratio or the pitch, as well as the row spacing between trackers in the north south direction. And then finally this last field tells me if I wanna use three string trackers only or both uh, three and two string trackers, so fulls and partials for this particular layout. Next, in utility scale mode, I have the option of defining access roads between standard blocks. So if I click on this button, it loads up another section of user interface where I can specify a standard block of two trackers up by, say, 10 trackers across. And then I can define the width of any access roads around those standard blocks. So I'm going to put in a 10 meter access road going east to west. And then the column spacing, uh, by default, it will give you an access road that will basically leave no extra space, it'll just be equal to the pitch of the trackers, but you can override it if I wanted a 10 meter access road, I can put that here or not. I can just leave it by default and it'll default to the to the column spacing. So let's just do that for now. Then my next option, if I choose to, is I can reserve space for an equipment pad in each standard block. So here I'm gonna go in and reserve a 10 by 20 uh, equipment pad spacing. I'm gonna put it in the top right corner of every standard block and mirror it from block to block. And then when, once I've defined that, it'll automatically include uh, the equipment pad spacing in each of my standard blocks. Once all, all that is done, I'm going to insert installation areas. That's what we call our standard blocks. So this is the size of one, two, two trackers up by 10 trackers across. And you can see that when I do my layout of my standard blocks, it leaves the equipment pads in the corners and mirrored as I expected. You can also see that I have an access road of uh, 10 meters in my east-west direction, and then in the north-south direction, the access road just preserves the road to road spacing. Now, I don't have to stick with just this default layout. I can delete any of these blocks I don't want to use. I can also uh, resize them. So if I pick one, I can just grab it and I can resize it. I can move the equipment uh, pads around. If I don't like where they end up, I can move them around manually. So I can totally adjust where my standard blocks are gonna end up within the drawing. And then once I'm satisfied with my standard block layout, I can then go back and uh, overlay the actual layout of all the trackers. And this is a, 
a much faster way of manipulating the drawing than if you're going to try to manipulate, you know, the 500,000 individual module squares uh, in AutoCAD. It would, it would just really bog them. This is going to allow me to do about a 100 megawatt site uh, really quickly and end up with a drawing that's much easier to manipulate and, and uh, move around in inside the AutoCAD environment. So there's my layout, and once it's done, I can uh, quickly go over to the summary tab, and we'll see that this is a 93 megawatt layout with uh, over 4,000 trackers and over 360,000 individual solar modules that we've been able to do just really quickly in the software. You can see here how the layout algorithm places either partial or full trackers, depending what there is space for, respecting the setbacks from obstructions and also the equipment pads and the bound site boundary as well. So it automatically go in and put full trackers or partial trackers, um, assuming you specify that you want to allow for partial trackers in your layout. Now again, the software gives the ability to custom manipulate the layout that's generated, so you can delete trackers from the layout if you want to. And you can also edit the layout by adding trackers uh, back in. So if I click Add Tracker, I can specify either full or partial. If I say partial, I can say, do I want to remove a string from the north or the south side of that tracker? And then I pick a, spar a starting point, and then I can drag out uh, more trackers of that size back into my layout. If you want more fine control over where trackers are placed, um, you can use the click and drag feature to really place trackers with more precision rather than in these standard blocks, including the ability to install trackers following a reference angle like an angled layout. So now I'm going to do another example. I'm going to use um, user defined, which means I'm going to specify some more boxes where I put in my string length on the number of strings per tracker and how much trackers stick out past the end of the last module and column gaps and things like this, just to define the geometry that otherwise comes preloaded when I, when I pick next tracker. And then I'm going to um, use the click and drag feature to insert my trackers. First thing we'll ask you is what length of tracker you want to insert, whether it's the full three-string tracker or partial tracker. And then it'll ask you what angle to use. And here I'm just going to use a, a default angle, which is just a square array, not an angled layout. I can then use the Shift Tab key to pick my insertion point and then drag out using click and drag an area of trackers. Next, let me show you how to insert a partial tracker. So again, I'll click and drag. This time I'll pick a two-string partial tracker. It'll ask me if I want to take it from north to south. Again, default square layout. Pick my insertion point and just drag out um, a row of, of partial trackers. And then the next thing I'll show you is how to do uh, an angled layout. So you see how this, this particular plot kind of angles up and to the right. So again, click and drag. I'm going to pick three string trackers. And this time I'm going to pick reference angle. I'm going to click two points along the line that I want to reference as my angle. And then when I insert the first tracker and I drag, it'll actually follow that reference angle as I insert the trackers. Um, it would be smart enough as well if I add trackers to these existing trackers to keep that same reference angle. So if I hit add tracker and I say full three string trackers and I, I pick a tracker and drag it out, um, you'll see the trackers that I add get added at that same reference angle automatically. Uh, and then finally, here is uh, what it looks like when I add a partial tracker at a reference angle. So again, click and drag. Just for fun, let's use a one string tracker, the smallest partial available. Um, I'm gonna pick my, pick it from the south end of the, and then pick my reference angle here, and then I can just drag it out and it'll follow the reference angle. So. Using click and drag, you can get really, really granular control over the shape of your of your layout and including uh, including angle layouts. The next thing I want to show you is how to do fixed tilt in utility scale versus tracker. So you can see we have our first uh, version one of this using trackers, and I'm going to go and create a new version, uh, version two, to show you a, a fixed tilt example. Um, so it's very similar to how it was before. I'm going to Take user to find fixed tilt. I'm going to say rows and columns of uh, 2 by 14 in this case. Specify my tilt angle, specify some of the other um, you know, geometries similar to before that define what my standard table of 2 by 14 modules is. And then once that's done, I'm going to use the same click and drag uh, 
feature to uh, fill my layout. And as before, I can specify a reference angle. So if I just want to do a square, I can uh, specify a square angle and click and drag out the first section square. Then I'm going to show you uh, if I want to have it angled more to, to line up with the boundary, I can do it as well, specify a reference angle, and uh, click and drag out the, uh, the reference angle as well and get a layout that way. Let me just go over to the summary tab and you can see how easy it is to compare you know, different versions of your, of your layout, uh, in this case, fixed tilt versus protractor. Um, you also have the option, of course, just to fill an entire area. So if you do click and drag and you specify the reference angle, um, you can just do fill rather than click and drag, of course, and it'll fill an entire area with fixed tilt um, tables as well.